Amen. You sanctified me and gave me everything that was necessary, amen, to, to bless his holy name. Yes. Thank God for my wife, Tina, amen, and uh, thank God for Evangelist Lair, God bless you, Sister Sam. Amen. amen. Deacon, uh, Deacon Van and Deacon uh, Bob Jones, God bless you all. And, Mother, Mother Van, and trustees, and each and every one of you come out to the house of prayer on today. We just thank God, amen, for, for you. Today, we're going to be taking a look in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter number 38. And Jeremiah chapter number 38, and we'll be looking at verses 1 through 13. Jeremiah 38, 1 through 13. I'm going to open up in prayer, and then we'll get right into what God has for us on today. Lord God, we just thank you for another opportunity to stand before your people. We thank you, God, for just allowing us to, to just be here in this place, God, gathered together. Your word let us know where two or three gathered in your name. There you are in the midst. So, God, we thank you for being right here in the midst. And because you're right here, God, we know that, that we're going to be blessed. As a matter of fact, we know that we're already blessed uh, because of you and what you have done, amen, for each and every one of us and for the whole wide world we thank you God for just blessing us God yes. we thank you God thank you, we thank you God thank you, Lord. we ask God that you may just have your way on today God and just yes. just use us God and be able to share your word God and that we may be able to have a heart to receive and be able to go and tell a dying world that Jesus lives yes. and so God we just thank you and we just bless your name and give you all praise and all glory and it's in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. 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 Jeremiah chapter number 38. Jeremiah chapter number 38. And we'll be looking at verses 1 through 13. And this right here would be uh, entitled The Muck and Myra. Uh, the Muck and Myra. That's M-I-R-E. To make sure you get this spelling right. The Muck and Myra. And we often... Uh, where some of us known to maybe use though, that phrase, and which is also uh, one in which is pretty familiar to all of us, the muck and mire. Jeremiah 38, 1 through 13. This is uh, uh, Jeremiah, and this Jeremiah here was uh, written by Jeremiah. The majority of this book was written by Jeremiah himself. And, and uh, in some of our Bibles, if you happen to have, uh, still have Bibles these days, <laughs> Um, you know, we have our, our applications, our apps now, but uh, in the front of uh, some of our Bibles, we have an introduction. We have a description of the, of the book in which, we're, which you're about to study and, and go into and read on your own. And, but here, I'm going to look in Jeremiah here in the beginning. I just want to just uh, give us a refresher of who Jeremiah is and the purpose and the setting here. And, and he talks about Jeremiah as... Um, the author. He says, Jeremiah doubtless, doubtless was the chief author of the book that bears his name. Its final edition was probably brought together shortly after his death by his scribe, Baruch. Jeremiah was the son of Hilkiah, a priest in the line of Abiathar, who, who lived in Anathoth. Because he was raised in the Levitical tribe, Jeremiah learned a high regard for the law of the Lord and the importance of the temple and priesthood. Uh, Jeremiah prophesied during the reigns of Judah's last kings. Uh, his prophetic ministry stretched from the days of Josiah. We remember Josiah. Uh, and um, he was a good king until Jerusalem's fall in the reign of Zedekiah. Uh, on down a little bit more, uh, this prophet was a deeply spiritual man. He was wholly dedicated to God so that despite a shy and retiring nature, his fervent love for God and his people never waned. Jeremiah became an object lesson of a man whose commitment to God enabled him by God's grace to overcome his natural timidity and live courageously in the face of severe opposition and tragic circumstances. His personal sorrow over the messages that he had to deliver often caused him to weep for his people in a manner unparalleled until the man of sorrows would, would come. Uh, so a lot of times we hear Jeremiah being the prophet of doom and, and, uh, and, and other words that's used. 
likewise, I'd like to just share that um, with, the death, with the death of the godly Josiah, Judah's apostasy quickly resurfaced. So when the man of God, uh, when that king left, the good king, people turned right back to where they were before. Isn't that something? Uh, and um, on it says that uh, Zedekiah, Josiah's third son, uh, was installed as king. He too was an ungodly king who persecuted Jeremiah and rejected his prophecies. And it says, finally in 586 BC, Nebuchadnezzar, with an R, totally destroyed Jerusalem, and Zedekiah was blinded and led away in chains to, to Babylon. Uh, so that's a little bit of, of Jeremiah, what this book is about and who he, who he was. And, and just a tad more, I'm going to read out of chapter 1, just a little bit. And this is for information that we just re refresh who Jeremiah is. In verse 4 through, t through 9, it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me. This is Jeremiah writing it, saying, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child or a youth. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Talking about Jeremiah. And so through all the things that Jeremiah went through, uh, he had a foundation that he can actually go through whatever came his way because he knew it was God, amen, who sent him. Isn't it good to know that that is God who sent you? Amen. amen. Not saying that we're all apostles and all these, but one thing for sure, we know it's a good thing that God has sent us. Amen. The Bible let us know over there in Matthew that God tells us to go. Go and tell them. That's what the gospel of the Bible lets us know. The Great Commission uh, is talking to all of us. So we all have been sent to do what God has told us to do. But right here in Jeremiah chapter number 38, Jeremiah comes in, in here in, in verse number one. It says, Then Shephatiah, the son of Matin, and Gedaliah, the son of Peshur, and Jukal, the son of Shalamiah, and Peshur, the son of Melchiah uh, heard the words that Jeremiah had spoken unto all the people. And this is what Jeremiah told all the people. In verse 2 it says, Thus saith the Lord. It is something whenever the man of God or woman of God came and told the people something and that God had told them to tell them, first of all, they would preface it with, Thus saith the Lord. Uh, be careful. Thus saith the Lord. We want to make sure this is what God is saying. Because uh, we don't want to put words in God's mouth uh, saying that he said this and he did not say, say that. We call them a false prophet. Verse 2 said, Thus saith the Lord, He that remaineth in this city shall die by the sword, talking about Jerusalem, by the famine and by the pestilence. But he that goeth forth to the, Cal forth to the Chaldeans shall live, for he shall have his life for a prey and shall live. Jerusalem or Judah had gone Amen. Uh, uh, they were out of their minds because they had a wicked king. And that's what happened because of the kingship. Uh, the people followed. And so now it's the time for, for God to get that place right and his people right because he has a mission for his people. Verse 3 says, Thus saith the Lord, This city shall surely be given into the hand of the king of the king of the Babylon, Babylon's army, which shall take it. Uh, therefore, the princess shall set, uh, said unto the king, we beseech thee, let this man be put to death. Talking about Jeremiah, because Jeremiah told them they need to just simply surrender. They need to give up. This is what's going to happen to this land. And he goes on and says, for thus he weakeneth the hands of the men of war 
that remain in this city. Or basically saying he's discouraging them. And the hands of all the people in, in speaking such words unto them. For this man seeketh not the welfare of this people, but the hurt. So basically he's saying, like, look, we got to get rid of this man right here because he is discouraging the troops. And he is not, amen, uh, lifting up the people, but he's tearing folk down. And, and so they're, they're telling the king this, and the king is listening. And after all, the king wasn't good anyways. Uh, so what words are coming to him, or whatever comes to him, amen, it really doesn't matter. Look at verse 5. Then Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand. For the king is not, listen to this, is not, the king is not he that can do anything, uh, look at that, against you. You cannot do anything against you. I was reading and it said, in one place said, the king who has the power and authority relinquished both to Shephatiah. Shephatiah. The king, basically King Zedekiah, shirked his responsibility. He avoided the responsibility. He neglected his responsibility. He just told the people, go ahead and do what you want to do to them because I ain't got nothing to say about it. I ain't got no authority in this. I ain't got nothing I can do do uh, do about this. Uh, but yet he's king and could have done whatever he wanted as king. Verse 6, then took they Jeremiah. Listen, look, 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 look. Then took they Jeremiah and cast him, look, into the dungeon of Melchiah, the son of Hamalek, that was in the court of the prison and they let down Jeremiah with cords or rope and in a dungeon, look, there was no water but Myra. So Jeremiah sunk into the Myra. So if we can imagine what this Myra is and, and I know that we often say the muck and Myra and the, and the Myra and the clay and, and everything, but I, but I really had to look it up actually. Muck is slimy mud uh, or debris and Myra is as deep, soft mud or moist and spongy earth. Have you ever just, just walked somewhere where it just, it just rained and rained and rained or water would just sat there and you walk, you put your foot in it thinking it's probably somewhat solid or if it's muddy, it's only maybe look half an inch maybe and you step in and your foot sunk all the way down. You see, that's that mire just, just sunk down and the other foot probably went down too. And when you get in there, it just suctions you. And when it just suctions you down, you can't pull your, your foot out for the world of it. All your strength, you try to get out of it. And that's what's happening right here. They put Jeremiah inside this cistern or inside this, 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 this hole. Uh, and there was nothing in there, no water, but that mire down there. And he was down there. And the only way, and the only thing he could do is basically look up. Because he was just like that. And, and then it, they left him there. They, they didn't just kill him. They didn't put a sword in him. But they put him in a dungeon, amen, so he can suffer. Uh, and now that's how, they, that's how they kill him. Killing him softly. Yes, with the soft mud down there. Long, long term. Uh, so what, what it is is that put him down there in that muck and, and miry. And, 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 and also when we translate of that muck and miry being stuck in and things like that, it kind of translates to something troublesome or Something that we cannot, or a situation we cannot get ourselves out of. We're just stuck in it, it seems like. Have you ever been in the muck and miry? You know how we say God has pulled us out of the muck and miry? You know, and that's what's happening right here. Jeremiah is, is stuck. Right in there is nothing that he can do. He can't do like that prisoner back in Pennsylvania, I think it was. He did the spotted man walk out of the prison. You know, he put his foot on one wall and hands on the other and got to crawling up. It wasn't happening right here. It was just enough where he, where Jeremiah was down there and nothing he could do. Now that's torture. That's torture. Uh, so yes, he, he just sunk. I said right there in verse number six at the end, at the very end. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire, meaning he went down into it, sunk in it. His weight went, went straight down into it. Now when 
Abed Melech. Look at that right there. Now went Abed Melech. Now we need to learn, amen, names like that. I mean, now I know we got names that we came up with, but this is one of the real names from Ethiopia. Look, y'all see that? Abed Melech. He was what? Ethiopian. Ethiopian. The Ethiopian. One of the eunuchs. And, and for those of us who may not know what a, a eunuch is, a, a eunuch was a, basically a palace official. Uh, uh, and Bedmelech was one of those palace officials. Uh, a, 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 a eunuch was a man who had been castrated. Uh, and during that time, uh, he was basically either an official like a Bedmelech or he was a, a guard. Uh, he, was, uh, he was made a guard. And a guard was to be in a palace to guard the women's living areas or the king's harem. Uh, so the eunuchs were made for specific things. You see, the king didn't want no man around those women and stuff that, that, that really had a desire for women. You know, so therefore this man was castrated. He, he, was, uh, he, was, he was put in front and to, to guard, those, guard the harem. So therefore, he wasn't going to mess with the women uh, that that the king that the the king's wives or the or the, or the harem of of the king. Mm -hmm. uh, so here he goes on. Ibedmelech the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs which was in the king's house, uh, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon. Uh, the king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin. And here's what happened, y'all. Ibedmelech this Ethiopian, y'all. And I like to, I would like to say that Ethiopian black folk are there. Am I right about it? Yeah. Uh, so, so this this black man right here, uh, you see, he had the ear of the king. It says right here, and Abedmelech went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, "My lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah, the prophet." Wait a minute, isn't this the king that told the men to go ahead and do what they wanted? Uh, and then uh, so Abedmelech comes and so he got the ear of the king says whom they have cast into the dungeon mm -hmm. and he is like to die for hunger. Um, he is likely to die of hunger in the place where he is for there is no more bread uh, what in the city. That's prophecy. Jeremiah said these things would come about. And the king would not listen. The people would not listen. They said that he was discouraging the, the, uh, discouraging the guards, discouraging the troops. He said he was just making the people feel, uh, feel basically hopeless. How many of you know without God we are hopeless? Amen. Amen. We got to have hope. Amen. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Yes. So yes, he goes on and, and he goes on in verse number 10. Then the king commanded Abedmelech. Abedmelech the Ethiopian. We often say whenever names were called in the Bible, they always attached something to those names so we can know who they're talking about. Y'all remember, we were even studying this woman in the Old Testament by the name of the harlot. Ray, thank, thank, thank you, mother. Rahab huh? the harlot. We just can't say this name. So now when we see Abedmelech, the Ethiopian. Absolutely. Now, now we know who he is. There's a saying, take from hence 30 men with thee and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he died. Wait a minute, king. Wait a minute, king. First you say, do what you want with him because I ain't got no authority on your base. I'm giving you the authority and ain't nothing I can do about it. That's what he told that, uh, told, uh, Shephatiah, do it. So they took him. They didn't kill him, but they just put him in a dungeon. Yes. Then we had a man, Abed Malek, the Ethiopian, mm -hmm. come and speaks in the king's ear and, and say that I got wind that they got Jeremiah down inside the dungeon and there's no, there's no bread and no bread in the city and he's going to die there if, if he's not taken out. And the king says, okay, do what you will. Wait a minute, king. He sounds like what? A very interesting, wishy-washy, here and there, up and down politician. 
who, where my vote going to come from? <laughs> Wherever it's coming from, what can I do for you? So now we see a bedman that comes and the king listens. And, and as the king listens, he tells him, go ahead and take 30 men. Go down there and rescue him. Go down there and then get him from, from this dungeon before he died. So Abedmelech took the men with him and, and went into the house of the king under the treasury and took fence old cast uh, clouts and old rotten rags and, and let, down, let them down by cords or ropes into the dungeon to Jeremiah. And look at this right here. Abedmelech, keep in mind what he did. He got old rags and different stuff like that. And his purpose for those old rags and clothes or whatever else he used. But he also used a rope. But how did he how did they let him down there? They let him down there on a rope. Those people didn't care because they expected him to die anyways. They didn't care how uncomfortable it was being let down uh, some long dungeon or deep dungeon amen, with a rope. But it goes on and says, Abedman left the Ethiopian in verse 12 said unto Jeremiah, put now these old cast clouts uh, and rotten rags under your armholes or armpits under the rope. And Jeremiah did so. So they drew up Jeremiah with cords or ropes and took him up out of the dungeon. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Now, I just simply like to share, amen, three particular points with us on today regarding this muck and mire. First of all, we see right here in the very beginning of this lesson right here of this chapter, we of this chapter number 38. We see Jeremiah went and told them if they don't, amen, surrender, give themselves up to the army of the Chaldeans or, or, or uh, give themselves up, then they would all die. Mm -hmm. So they need to go ahead and give it up. If they, amen, if they don't give up, then not only would they die, but the city of Jerusalem will be burned down. Mm -hmm. So he told them what thus saith the Lord. So number one, we want to make sure that we go and tell it. Can you tell your neighbor, go and tell it? If we got a neighbor, amen, now we got to tell ourselves, go in and tell it. We got to go and tell it because of the fact that's what we're called to do. Amen. As I said before, the Great Commission, God told us, amen, Jesus told, told them, that's Matthew chapter number 28, I believe it is. And, and I'm going to read that for us because sometimes we do need a reminder to go and tell it. He says, amen, in, in uh, verse number 29, ch chapter Matthew 20, 28, and in verse number 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, because he has the power, he says, then go. Go ye therefore and teach, he says, all nations. And then tell them what to do, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you and lo I am with you always even until the end of the world amen so basically what he's saying is that amen he's telling us each and every one of us to go and tell it what are we going to tell we're going to tell the truth it's the truth amen that got Jeremiah down in the dungeon we've got to tell it anyhow uh, we got to tell the truth in the face of a lie Amen. Regardless how many, amen, people come this way saying, amen, thus, thus, and thus, if it's against the truth, then we got to stand up for the truth. Or the truth will either get you in trouble. Amen. Here's why, but the, but the truth, when you tell the truth, when you tell it, you will get some feedback. Because some, you're going to, you're going to get some good feedback and you're going to get some bad feedback. But remember, it's not all, it's not at all about you. You know, so we ain't supposed to take it personally. Uh, but about the one who came and lived and died uh, for the sins of this world, the sins of you and me. Amen. That's what the truth is about. Yes. So no, you ain't got to take it personally because he tell you to go and do it. Uh, like Joseph, amen. Uh, he was also put in a pit like Jeremiah, like Jesus. Hey Amen. We too will be put in a so-called pit or that myra. Not necessarily a pit, but we would be like in one. We will be stuck in some type of mud, seem like we can't get out uh, in a sense. Whatever situation we find ourselves in. But God said he's always there, just like he told Jeremiah. Go ahead and tell it. Hey Amen. He said, if, if, if you're scared, you can't call the police, but just don't look at their faces then. Uh, but, but still, I'm gonna, he said, I'm going to be there. So go, go and tell it anyhow. The second point I would like to leave us today 
is don't lose hope. They put Jeremiah in the dungeon. They put him in a hole. There was no water. There's no bread in the city. They put him in a deep dungeon. And the only thing was down there was mire. Only thing was down there was that mud, that soft mud that he sunk, the Bible says, into. You get him down there, and it seems like you just can't pull your leg, your foot up because it seems like it suctions you down. It pulls you down. Isn't that what sin do? Right when you want to do right, right when you want to do the right thing, amen, sin just trying to pull you right back down. It seems like that gravity just comes to you, won't let you go. Amen. So somehow you got to break out of that thing. Jude even said, yes, pull him out of the fire, yank him out of the fire. That's what he said over there in Jude. If we want to save somebody, just yank them out. If a child is going across the street or anybody else and they don't see that car, yank them out of the way. Don't stand there and just talk to them and try to coax them back. Yeah. Yank them back. So here, when it comes to this how sin is, it tries to pull us down and once it pulls us down, it tries to keep us down. It seems like you just can't put your, can't pull your Foot out of that mud that's, that's just sucking you down. But even though we may be in some sort of pit or situation in our life. Also, number two, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope even though you may be right there. Losing hope basically, or don't lose hope, meaning basically keep the faith. Uh, because knowing that God never fails. Uh, when it looks like nothing is happening. And, and it looks like that sometimes. It looks like that sometimes. See, like nothing is happening. Nothing at all. There seems to be no sense of urgency from anyone. And you seem like you're just drowning or, or you're just stuck in this situation. You're stuck in the, in the mud. Mm -hmm. But remember, God is always at work. Right now, if you are any kind of, of a pit, stuck in the muck and mire, do know that God sits high and looks low. And no, do know that God will take care of you. Amen. Though it seems like the mud is keeping you, uh, keeping you down, sucking you down, won't let you go, right when you think there is no way out, Amen. There is always a way. Can somebody say there's a way? There's a way. There's a way. There's a way. I, I can imagine when I was reading it and I saw how that myron, what it stood, what, what it meant and, and how it would just pull you down. I, I know we ain't got to go far, but, but one time I was over in South Korea, it was just raining and raining and raining and raining. Just, and they called it Camp Mud Chuck. And, and, uh, and as soon as you step in the mud, it seemed like you went down a whole foot. And it's so hard to get the other foot out and everything. So you try to stay away from the mud uh, because it seems like it just pulls you on down and it won't let you won't let you go. But there is a way of getting out of that situation. First of all, we don't lose hope. We can see Jeremiah inside this dungeon right here. Mm -hmm. And however big the dungeon was or however narrow it was or however deep it was. One thing for sure is that we eat had nothing to do but to do what? Look up. Amen. If that's where, amen, the, the, uh, the, the light is coming from, look up. As a matter of fact, the Bible lets us know, look to the hills from which cometh our help. And all of our help comes from, amen, the Lord. Amen. We got to look to him. We got to look to him. I'll never forget the day I, I, I always went in my own room. Tired of sleeping in bed with my brothers and can on. You know, other people had their own room and stuff in their houses and everything. And, and uh, so... Uh, so therefore, we had this one little walkthrough area that goes from the, the, the living room, I guess we call that, where the fireplace was, uh, uh, like kind of a side, like a sideway, to the kitchen. And I said, that's where we kept the deep freezer at and everything. And uh, so, yeah, I got me a little bed in there and stuff like that, a little single bed and stuff. And then had, I put, put me a little S hook on that door right there, had me a little 13-inch TV and, and put the lid you on know, the handle. Put the handle up there. I was, what are you talking about? That was my room there. Until my mother came by. And she saw the TV up there. Looking up up there and everything. She said, take that down. 
The only thing you should be looking up to is Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, it's interesting. So it's like, wow, you know. And so that never left me. I always know. You're going to look up, you look to Jesus. And that's what we got to do. Oh, uh, you know, and I imagine they can, they can just see it themselves, my wife and, and, and my sister there, you know, uh, my mother saying that. But but that's what we got to do. We got to look to Jesus. Everything is Jesus. Amen. Tell me you can't bring a sermon out of anything. <laughs> Amen. And so, and that's what happened. So he just simply had to look up. He did not lose hope. Jeremiah kept the faith. Jeremiah knew that there was a way and that there was a way out. Even though when we sometimes think there is no way out, there is no way, amen, I can amen, take care of this MLG and WBO. There is no way, amen, I can take all of this stuff that's coming at me right now. Amen. amen. Everything's in that. I lost my job and these bills are still coming in and, and everything else happening and everything. What's wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I've been laid off or whatever the situation may be. And, and all of a sudden, because I've kept the faith, because I kept on looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. He made a way out of no way. That's what our God, amen, is good in when we think that all is lost. Amen. God will make a way for us all. He will not give up on us. Though we may, may try to give up on God, but God will never, never, ever give up on his people. Amen. Uh, so, uh, amen, there is a way. Which takes us to our last point. Our last point is stay in the way. What do you mean stay in the way? We look right here. In uh, uh, Jeremiah, stay in the way. In fourth, in uh, stay in the way. Here in, in in verses in verses in which we didn't go over fourteen through through twenty eight. Here's what happened. Jeremiah got out. He got out. He got out. He got out. And what happened is that the king, the king that told that told Abed Melech to go and rescue him. Mm -hmm. Then later on, the king came to Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. He said, "Can you can you tell me?" Tell me again about what your God is saying. And Jeremiah, regardless, amen, we already know what happened before. He's asked the king one question. If I tell you, you're going to kill me. And the king said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And then, amen, Jeremiah said, okay, let me go ahead and step up. Jeremiah went on and told him that, look here, king, if you don't surrender, not only, amen, would this city go down in flames, not only would you die and all the people in here will die. So go ahead and surrender, uh, king. And the king, amen, no doubt probably thought on those words of Jeremiah. And he realized that how much authority and how much power a king has. He knew a king does not surrender. So this king said, I ain't going nowhere. And nowhere he went. Amen. Because he died right where he was. So here's what happened. Here's what happened. They, here's what happened. And it tells us there. It tells us there. And I kind of read it in the very beginning. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. The king of the, uh, this uh, uh, king never, never, the Babylonian king, uh, get those, those nebbers, uh Okay. Those Babylonian, uh, Babylonian king, he took them. Here's what he did. He killed his sons in front of him. He killed, amen, uh, Zechariah's sons in front of him. Not only did he just kill, amen, his sons in front of him, afterwards he did that, amen, he ended up blinding, blinding the king. So the last thing that this king ended up seeing is not only just his sons, amen, being killed before him, but also Jerusalem and everything else had been, amen, laid flat. Uh, basically, the walls have come down. And then basically now what has happened is that he understood the prophecy that Jeremiah told him. Isn't it good to be in the way? Being in the way means that look, when, 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 when falsity or when lies come, just stand in the way and tell the truth. Amen. That's what Jeremiah did. In the face of adversity, stand anyhow. Amen. There's a song, amen, by the singer says, stand. Stand. Uh, you know, and that's what we got to do. We got to stand anyhow. You know, when, when Stand anyhow. So yes, Jeremiah told, told this king again what would happen because he came and asked him. So I can hear Jeremiah say that Jesus, not only did he allow me to get out of 
that pit. But Jesus will allow each and every one of us to get out of the situations we find ourselves in that we think that we can't get out of. Jesus himself, amen, is a way maker. I can hear Jeremiah say Jesus is a way maker. He made a way for me. If he made a way for Jeremiah, he'll make a way for you. Yes, Regardless what comes our way. Yes. Regardless what we think is so big. Yes. But let us, let, let us be reminded that nothing is bigger than God. Amen. Just put it in the hands of God yes. and he will take care of the situation. Amen. Nothing is too hard for God. Yes. Amen. Because why? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the way. Christ. He is the truth. Yes. And he is the life. I can see Jeremiah being in the way, mm -hmm. the right way. I can see Jeremiah telling the truth. Mm -hmm. He was telling the truth. And I can see Jeremiah saying, now I do have life. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the Bible lets us know that not only should we have life, but we should have life more Abundant. abundantly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not just have life. Don't just live, y'all, mm -hmm. but live abundantly. Amen. We've got to have some abundance, y'all. Yeah. I ain't talking about stacks of money and like that. I'm talking about with the joy that we have in God. Amen. We got to have it. That's where our joy comes from. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. Amen. That's our joy. Yes. And that's what we got to have. Amen. In times like this. Yes. In times like in Jeremiah, he needed that joy. Yes. And joy he did have. Even though, amen, we may not tell it. Jeremiah said he's full of joy. Yes. Every time, amen, he got through telling the truth. But in the process, he had to go through some stuff. Yes. But even in the process of him getting ready to tell it, they know, oh, here he come. We can see the way he walking. Oh, man, let me, I don't want to see him. He don't need to come to me because I know he got a message, a message of doom. Uh -huh. Amen. So, so, but why? Because God is simply telling the people, get right. God is telling us right now, get right, church. Get right, church, because one day we're all, what, going home. Get right, church. And there's I'm not, I'm no Jeremiah. Yes. But one thing in which we all should be able to do is just tell it. Yes. Once, we, uh, once we just tell it, keep the faith. Yes. Don't lose hope. Knowing that God, amen, will, will rescue us from whatever situation we find ourselves in. And then likewise, not only will we do, do, tell the truth and, and, uh, and, and uh, tell the truth and just be in, and then we got to be in the way. In the face of adversity, stay right there. Stand, stand, stand. And God will continue to deliver just as he did with Jeremiah. Amen. God has a way. He used Abed-Melech, the Ethiopian. God was already at work. Jeremiah didn't know. But God was working already. He was working on the heart of the king. He was working on Abed-Melech. Somebody who saw what was going on, heard what was going on, and said something needs to be done. God is working on, on your behalf somehow, some way, through somebody else. Amen. You may not see it. You may not know anything about it. But God is already working it. And it seems like nothing has happened. Yeah. There's always a failure here. It seems like nothing is going right. Yeah. Can't do this and like that. If there's a block here. I can't, I can't go this way. And, and it seems like everything, I'm just, I'm just stuck. Stuck. And then all of a sudden, you see this, God just brings you right on out. And then when you look back, you can see God was always at work. And that's what that's the message we got to tell the world. God is at work for you. Regardless how you feel, regardless what situation you may feel like you're in, God is at work. He's doing something. You may not see it right now. I may not be able to do anything. Maybe I'm maybe the only thing I'm supposed to do is just tell you. God is at work. He'll never fail us. He'll never leave us. He'll keep us. He won't forsake us. Yes. Amen. That's right. God is right here. Yes. And he's right here yes. with us. Yes. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you, God, for your word, how your word lets us know that well, you got Jeremiah out of that muck and mire. Yes. Likewise, you have showed us that you would never leave us nor forsake us. We find ourselves in situations where it seems like we're stuck in the muck and mire. But it's you, God, who knows how to pull us out. So, God, we thank you, God, for just showing us that you are always at work. God, we ask that as we ask you always to use us.
God, give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Yes. That we may be the one to be a help to somebody else. Yes. Or someone else, whomever you choose, oh God. Give us the courage to be able to step forward and stand up for what's right. Yes. So God, we love you. We thank you. We bless your name, God. We do give you all praise and all glory. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Yes. Amen and amen. 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 God bless God bless you all. Amen. Uh, at this time, we're going to do the tithe and offerings. Our deacons or our trustees will come with the tithe and offering. However, just instruct the church as you see fit. <laughs>